Welcome. In today's video, I will share with you a guidance that will help you to relax out of your form identity, personal identity, ego, into a more expansive understanding of yourself, into subtler realms of being, aka your formless identity, your more essential identity. I recommend that you watch this video with your undivided attention. Maybe close your eyes, set aside everything you're doing right now, all other phones and devices, and just be and go within yourself and allow the words to guide you into this realization, into this seeing. I hope you enjoy, and I hope you gain a ton of value from it. Let's begin. As always, when you're beginning with a guidance, you're learning to let go of being so focused in form. Right now, your personal life for these moments that we're together does not matter. Have that attitude. Proceed with the attitude that just for these moments, I'm allowing myself to rest down all concern about me and what happens to me and what I care about and what I want to fight and I want I don't like, what I do want and what I do expect. Just like these notions of me and mine, you know, here and now they have no value because here and here they will limit you. Don't worry about later. Don't worry about even 10 minutes from now, just here and now. You know what is real for you? Here and now, see if you can just not care about me and mine. And notice how you can't do that by thinking about how to do it. You can't do that by thinking, oh, how do I do that? Or how do I let go? You just have. Even that concern is me and mine. Even that concern, how do I do this or am I doing this right? You must simply let go. Meaning you have no interest to hold, to even touch or pursue that concern. <laughs> We have to set down these concerns of me and mine because they are focused from personal identity about personal life. And they'll keep you focused, immersed in form. Whereas what the teaching is pointing you to is your formless being, your formless ground of existence in which form appears, but it has no reality. It has no truth. Even the judgment that's arising in mind about this right now, or a concern that's arising about this statement, don't touch it. Don't pursue it. Learn to simply let go. In these moments, you are free. You have no burden. You have no expectation. You have no need to touch any thought. It won't get you anywhere. It will only be limiting you. Later on after this call, if you wish, Think all you want, doubt all you want, care all you want, resist all you want, but here and now have no space for that. <laughs> here and now have no space for thinking about even later.
So again, concern, or in other words, thought. Thought keeps you immersed, hypnotized, in form, in transient experience, in that which comes and goes. And thought makes us perceive ourself as that which also comes and goes. Meaning, thought is not only focused in form, it's also focused as form. In thinking, we think as a person. Thinking is not only about something, it's also as that which you are appearing to be thinking. We think about the world as a person. So it imposes on you a identity. A form identity. And the constant psychological chatter feeds this form identity and keeps us focused and immersed, hypnotized in form. Feeling like form is the ultimate reality. This continuous mental chatter gives rise to the seeming sense of form being real. Which is why here and now you are invited to lose interest in me and mine. When I say me, notice how you automatically think of your face or your name or who you take yourself to be as a person. You see, that is the form identity. And of course, for that one, letting go of me and mine is a very big concern. How could you tell me to do that? Who are you to tell me to do that? Automatically, it has its guards up. It wants to be protected. It wants to resist. It doubts. It fights. If you buy into that doubt and fight, you once again limit yourself and impose upon yourself the identity on behalf of whom you're fighting. And so it becomes an obstacle. <laughs> Which is why the invitation is just like here and now. I mean, you have nothing to protect. You have nothing to hide. Be totally vulnerable. Be open to any possibility. Be open to the possibility that you are not what you take yourself to be. That what I take to be real and true may not be real and true. We have to be totally open to that possibility. So our concerns and doubts and fears and resistances they feel important because of the personal identity which feels the need to be protected. Here and now, don't buy into it. Have no interest. You have nothing to gain or lose. We must be courageous enough to not pursue any idea, not believe in any doubt or resistance, just for the time being. Only with this openness can we proceed.
even let's say right now something comes up in your mind and you it's a question you want to ask later, let it go. If it's really important, it will come again later. It just don't have no desire to touch anything right now. No desire to keep hold on to anything, keep anything. You can only hold on to something as a somebody. The moment you touch, the moment you pursue, the moment you hold, you also become a somebody that is holding. Even that which interprets what is being said, don't hold on to it. Don't touch it. Don't pursue it. Have no need to understand anything. You see like the, the play that we're doing here? Mind throws all of these subtle webs to once again impose on you personal identity. It throws the web of judgment. It throws the web of interpretation, description. The moment you touch, once again, personal identity is there. And once again, any opportunity, any glimpse of self-knowledge, self-awareness is veiled. Even this, okay, but what then, what do I do? Is a web, is another web. You know, right now you're being asked to not touch any concern or doubt or interpretation or description or judgment or expectation, or even this need to understand what is being said or how to do it. And so then maybe the mind says, okay, then what do I do? What are you telling me to do? <laughs> even this is a web. Don't buy into it. Don't touch it. Have no interest in holding on to it, caring about it, needing to fulfill it. <laughs> this is where sometimes we get really frustrated because it's like, okay, what to do though? Like, uh, but then what next? <laughs> it's like, okay, I stop all this, but then, okay, what now? <laughs> that itself is also just another web. Do you see, it's frustrating because here you're sort of leaving the realm of doing for a moment. Not like by going somewhere else inside of the world or inside of your mind. Just by learning to not pursue or touch or identify or believe in anything that arises in the mind. You are going from a very dense form focus, very contracted, dense, worldly form focus to subtler realms of your being. As you go into the subtler realms of your being, the whole notion of doing does not exist. Doing only exists on the level of form, mental or physical. Knowing that, next time the mind says what next or what to do, notice that it's once again trying to bring you into that focused contraction Dense focus contraction into form. See it and do nothing about it. Let it go. Don't touch, don't claim, don't believe. Simply be. <laughs> How difficult it is for us to just be. 
how difficult it is for us to not think about what's next. You see, your thought about what's next is what is creating next. Otherwise, there is no next. Our thought about next is what is holding us back from discovering and exploring what is. Because what's next can only be form. Only form is subject to past, present, future. What is simply is. Only form moves from was, is, and is no longer. What actually is simply is, and it has no notion of next or before. It has no notion of even now, because even that is an idea. It's reality, it's realness, it's beingness is what we may call the now, is what we refer to the now, the place where things so, seem so real. But it's not the things that are coming and going that are real. It is the ground in which they are coming and going that is real. The things that are coming and going are form the ground of being in which they appear and disappear is formless. The path from the form to the formless is learning to not pursue, interpret, judge, describe. Expect, want, care. The path from the from form to the formless is stillness. Don't touch. Simply be. The formless is not some far off reality that is in another dimension, somewhere deep within you or somewhere on the other side of this world. Be still and know the formless. Be still and it will fall in your lap. You can perhaps will the body to be still, but sheer will will not help you to still the mind. For that, you need alertness. For that, you need to let go of interest in the content of the thoughts. The reason this is hard is because we are so compulsive right now. We are in a state of such compulsion such compulsive focusing in form. So don't feel like, oh, but this is so hard and it is impossible and it's not going to happen or whatever. Again, that is just more thought. Instead of just buying into that, 
actually acknowledge how difficult it is and know and see the the problem with that you know see the need of this When you see the need of it, then regardless of how difficult it is, you grow interested in it. Let's say you're sick. If you're, if you're sick and you're ill and you see the need of medicine, you see the need of healing, you, need to, you, need to, you see a need of, okay, I have, maybe I have to change my ways a little bit. Through the seeing of that need, you do whatever is necessary for you to, to get out of that illness. It's similar in this way. By seeing how currently compulsive we are in our need to think, <laughs> how compulsive we are to constantly describe and judge my existence. Seeing that, that to be the problem, which is keeping us in a state of hypnosis, veiling all wisdom and self-knowledge. We must see the need of silence. We must see the need of this practice. And the thought, this is too difficult, should not be enough to stray us away back into that compulsive distraction. Because you know, what is truly difficult is remaining in this, this constant outwardness, this constant compulsive distracted state, and experiencing the suffering that comes along with that. That is the real difficulty. We have to outgrow it. We have to see how dysfunction and dysfunctional and unnecessary it is. The teaching gives us the medicine. It shows us the way. And we must have greater faith in the way than we do in our doubts, interpretations, expectations. You see? All that you have suffered so far in your life has brought you to this, this pointing, this teaching. All that we have suffered in life has brought us to a, also a, a maturing, a seeing that like, as a person, there is never going to be that ultimate fulfillment, that satisfaction by remaining just chasing experiences. You know, that's what the person wants. They want some sort of ecstasy all, their, all around. They want some sort of constant, pleasant experience. But it's almost like a child, uh, you know? Our suffering helps us to outgrow the personal tendency, which is constantly being focused in form as the form identity it helps us mature into this curiosity of that which is beyond form that which is true Don't explore the true. Don't just try to, don't walk the path of the true. Expecting some, just continue to expect the same, some sort of ecstasy or good feeling or this or that, which you may, you may, we may have an idea of what this leads to. But again, that is just a personal idea, which will keep us limited. 
it is a very, very unique path where you are asked to let go of your idea about the destination because any idea you have about it is the past, is just your, the ideas born from your past. So here and now, this experience of speaking and listening, the words being said, the sound being heard, the thoughts interpreting the sounds and creating a meaning out of it and wanting something from it or not wanting it, all of that is the form that is passing, appearing, disappearing. Instead of giving ultimate reality to the forms that come and go, acknowledge here and now the, the realness in which they come and go, the presence in which they come and go. The now has like an isness about it. It has a realness about it, a truthness about it. Don't think about that. Tune into that, acknowledge that, notice that. These contents will keep shuffling around. Soon these words will no longer be here. They'll be replaced with some other words. Soon the body will look like something else or be doing something else. Soon the mind will be thinking something else or feeling somewhere, somehow else. Soon the world will look something like something different. Yet no matter how it appears to be, no matter what it appears to be, no matter how much change it undergoes on the level of world, body, and mind, aka form, it will still only appear in this nowness, this realness, this truthness, this presence. This I-ness. This beingness, this emness, isness, aliveness. None of these words really point to a particular form. It points to that in which form comes and goes, appears and disappears. They don't have a physical or mental counterpart. For example, the word glass or car has a physical counterpart that it is pointing to. The word anger or fear, it has a, call it mental counterpart that it is pointing to. A form counterpart, a form thing that it's pointing to. The word presence the word now, the word I. See what they are pointing to, if they have any form counterpart that they're pointing to. What we have to learn, the, what we have to see that we have the capacity to do is rather than think about what is being said, give attention, notice what the words are pointing to. 
Thinking will only create more concepts about what is being said. Directly perceive, see, know, be aware, notice, acknowledge. Instead. We say, my attention is glued to thoughts, or, or the witnessing seems so glued to thoughts or thinking. No, it's not. <laughs> That's just another thought believed in. Thoughts are coming and going in your seeing. There's no, there's no stuckness anywhere. Sure, the attention is scattered which is why the practice is there. The practice needn't be easy. What desires for it to be easy? What resists it? What finds it difficult? If not just the conceptual mind, the constantly talking mind that is even just, just always describing the practice and trying to run away from it simultaneously. If it's difficult, then we must see even the greater need for the practice instead of running away from it. No matter how difficult the mind makes it appear to be, the difficulty cannot withstand your presence. So despite the perceived difficulty, if we just genuinely keep taking this current step, just continuing to practice the pointer, in the light of this presence, all difficulty will gradually burn, melt. We have to acknowledge how the mind speaks things as if they are fact. Oh, the attention is glued to thinking. No, it's not. <laughs> That's not a fact. It's just another idea. When you believe in it, it becomes your fact. And now that's the idea through which we see our life and our practice. Of course, it will be more difficult. So we have to observe how the mind constantly claims things and says things as if they are fact, as if they are true. They are only as true as the amount of belief you put in them. We have to see our own power in that. We have to see our capacity to not pursue that idea, believe in that idea, to take it to be true. Whatever the mind proposes is a concept. 
Whereas the knowing of that thought arising, despite what it is saying, the awareness of that thought arising is fact. It is an undoubtable fact. It is a non-conceptual fact. Even the thought that arises and says it is not a fact, even the awareness of that thought is fact. <laughs> By observing the mind and its ways, you begin to realize how anything that it spins out is just another conceptual idea. And that currently, our whole understanding of ourself and the world is just a bunch of these conceptual ideas. We actually know nothing about life as it is. We only know it to be what we have been taught. We only know ideas. <laughs> so what we're learning here is direct perception, being aware of being, seeing life as it is without, without any preconceived notion, without any concept. This is the path of stillness. This is the path from form to formless. From falsehood to clarity. We have an idea of the formless as being some sort of crazy out there reality or some deeper, higher self being. That's just our idea of it. Whereas the formless being is what you are here as. And you come to know that if you just drop your concepts here and now. If here and now we stop touching all concepts, then our whole idea of who I am here as starts to diminish and be seen as an idea rather than, oh, the reality of where I'm living from. You see? That is what the meditation practice does. Here and now you drop all ideas, all conceptualization, in that moment, your entire conditioning is not there. Even your notion of you sitting there and meditating must go. When we just practice the pointer, we just keep returning to the pointer, then this whole notion of even who you are sitting there and doing a practice as, all th th that notion is not even there. Takes us some so maybe some time to recognize that, but in the practice, all notions go. And then formless being is not some crazy thing over there or deep within. It's that which is perceiving this moment. That which is, it's that which remains.
So that is why there's a great emphasis on in all of our talks to let go, let go of concepts. I know it's an extreme approach and it's not for everybody, but somehow this teaching has called to you and resonated with you. And that is a sign that it is right for you, that it is, that you are ready for it and it is ready for you. And despite if it's, despite it being difficult, if it resonates with you, you have to go all in on it. You owe that to the teaching. You owe that to life. <laughs> So from here, you know, carry on with your sessions or any moment of practice, even during the day. In that moment, your, your, call it your initiative is to just sort of let go of touching anything. You know, no, don't touch any idea about yourself. Don't touch any idea about past, future, want, not want. These are just the, this is, these are the single webs out of which the entire prison of conditioning is made. And we must be willing to not touch anything in this moment. Have that intensity in your moments of practice. The rest, you know, when you're working and you're doing, it's just, just be a normal person. You know, when I go about my life, I don't even worry too much about spirituality and stuff. Like, there's no need to. Just just do things normally. Do what you want to do. Enjoy your life. Um, but you'll notice that if you just start to really devote yourself in moments of practice and you start becoming totally empty, the more you discover yourself at the, call it the level of formless being, the less you will resist the personal stuff. We must totally be willing to empty ourselves and undress ourselves from the person. And we must also be totally willing to just be a person. Notice how the mind resists both. Actually, because the mind only survives on resistance. Ever notice that? It's not like once it gets its way, it gets satisfied. No, it just starts resisting something else. No circumstance will ever be perfect. The mind is born out of resistance and it survives and thrives only on resistance. Seeing this, we must outgrow our identification with everything that is being said. All this verbalization, all this conceptualization. Let go of this constant self-talk. Your life is not being held together by it. Be courageous and lead your life with silence. It will not disappoint you. If you'd like to deepen your understanding of this teaching and really start to apply it to your life, firstly, check out my free resources that I'm offering in the description box below. Uh, if you do want more structured support and my guidance with applying this teaching into your life and having someone help you with all of your confusions and doubts and questions, then maybe the School of Awakening would be more appropriate for you, which is my day-by-day -day meditation program that really guides you through this entire process and really helps you integrate the teaching into your life fully. So I'll link that down below as well. You can check that out if that resonates with you. Uh, if this video brought you value today, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's all for me for today. I will see you next week with a new video. Until then, have a good one.